with you. It is your boy, Travis Kinley, coming back to you with another one. I am walking around the gravel lot adjacent to the Days Inn, waiting on a load. Basically, what I've been doing is doing like round trip trips, round trip loads, working with this agent, you know? And uh, so right now I'm on a load on the way back to the destination where I picked the trailer up, round trip. And, uh, you know, usually the way it works is, which I'm new in this, you know, agreement, new working with this agent, but the way it works is basically when you're on the way back or when you're about done with your current load, they're going to, you know, try to set you up with something else. So you just keep going, keep going. So that's what I'm doing. However, um, they're not going to have loads for today or for this week until a few hours from now. I know. So like your immediate reaction is to get impatient, right? Your immediate reaction is, well, you know what? If y'all ain't got nothing, I'm gonna go back and pick up my, you know, Landstar trailer and just get on the load board. That's your immediate reaction. However, I've entertained that idea. You know, Travis, man, I think of all options. I, ooh, I like options. I don't wanna say love, but I really like options. I considered that idea, however, the only problem with that idea, not the only, but one of the problems with that idea is that number one, everything within 75 to 100 miles, generally speaking, doesn't pay as much as what I am receiving working with this agent. Um, not everything, but almost everything that I saw on the load board doesn't pay as well as what I'm getting working with this agent. You know? So you might say, well, something's better than nothing, but is that so? You know, like people say, is it really though? Would it really be better not to work with this agent just to get something, to get some revenue moving when I may not be as profitable in the long run? So far I've been answering that question is no, it's not as profitable to do that. Now, in some cases, the answer may be yes. And it's like, well, you know, I'll talk to that agent whenever he's got something going on in his office. But right now, that answer is no, man. So before I get into the actual point of the video, I'm basically saying sometimes something is better than doing nothing. And other times, it's better to just be patient. It really is. It's better to just be patient. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm taking a walk. Also, that's number one reason I'm taking a walk because I'm just being patient because I just really don't think I'll be as profitable going back to the load board right now. And number two reason I'm taking a walk is because I'm fairly certain this is the only time of day I can walk. Um, rain's coming in in about 30 minutes to an hour and it's supposed to rain on my head all the way back to where I'm going to drop this trailer off. And, you know, I don't know... If I got to come back this way, it's going to be raining later today too. So I was like, better spend some time outside the truck, cuz, cuz this is the only time you're going to get. So I was talking with a friend of mine yesterday, or day, I think it was yesterday. Yep, it was yesterday. Talking to a friend of mine yesterday after going to Walmart. And uh, we were talking about whether it is even possible for truck drivers to be able to make it home every weekend, make it home every day, but still run like a healthy business and, you know, be profitable and not just be paying the bills. Well, I answered yes, I thought so. Some people don't think so. How about drop a comment, tell me what you think. Do you think it is possible for truckers to be able to, you know, run a healthy business, be profitable, but also be home every weekend or home every night? owner operators whether leased on or running your own numbers or what tell me what you think i answered yes and there are two ways you can do this but they all stem down to one way the one way you can do this is keeping your cost per mile in check that is the key i think so now i've only been an owner operator a few months and a lease operator, you know, a year or something like that, a year and some change. If you keep your cost per mile in check, it's going to enable the more your cost per the lower your cost per mile, the more you are able to go home. Now, whether you decide to do that or not, it's your business. I don't care. 
the more you your the lower your cost per mile the more you're able to go home the more you're able to take time off take vacation etc the lower your cost per mile the less pressure on you as an operator to have the open sign on your door every single day of the week now there's two ways I can think of now there's more than two ways to keep your cost per mile in check but there's two ways to accomplish this especially from the onset one way is something you can do from the onset of becoming an owner operator and the second way is something you can do even if you've been an owner operator for a while first way is to be very I don't know if conservative is really the word but be very uh, don't be so aggressive in how much you're willing to spend on a truck. Now, this is not me advocating and waving the banner of cash truck, but don't be so aggressive in what you're willing to spend on a truck. For example, I remember when my wife, one day I came home from work, my wife looked at me and she was like, hey, Tra hey Travis, um, she never calls me Travis. That was weird for me even to even imagine. But she's like, hey, Travis, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure you could buy a house if you wanted to. Right? She's talking about, like, my salary uh, in conjunction with my, like, I'm pretty sure you have the ability to buy a house if you want to. And I was like, can't buy a house, dude. I didn't think I'd buy a house. She's like, no, pretty sure you can. Okay, so if Christina says something to me, I should be listening. If she corrects me and says it again, I should really be listening, okay? Um, when I applied for a mortgage, I was, you know, approved for something like $180,000 something. You know, you can get a pretty decent house in my area with that money. Instead of getting a $180,000 house, I got a house for under $100,000. So that's what I mean by don't be so aggressive in what you're willing to spend when you pay for a truck. Just because you have the down payment for a brand new truck doesn't mean you should get a brand new truck. Now, I made a podcast that touched a little bit on this topic, but it's essentially saying, you know, you don't have to spend a ton of money on a truck just because you're able to spend a ton of money on a truck. You can be a little less aggressive in what you're willing to spend. And what that's gonna do is gonna bring your cost per mile down, um, which will allow you to profit more on the loads that you're hauling. And if you can profit more on the loads that you're hauling, you don't need to work as much to make your magic number. Your magic number being that number you really need to make every week, that number you really need to make before you go back to the house, that number you really need to make in order to achieve the goals, whatever your magic number is and whatever the motive is behind your magic number, you don't have to haul as much freight to hit that magic number if you didn't pay as much for your truck. You're paying $2,200 a month for your truck. That is not going to keep you out as much as paying $4,000 a month for a truck. You're paying $2,500 a month for a truck. It's not going to keep you out as much as $3,500 a month for a truck. That $1,000 is $1,000. Just because you make good money, golly, don't get off track. track. Nothing burns me up more than somebody who starts making money and forget what a dollar is worth. Now I'm going to leave it alone. That's all I'm going to say. All right? So keep your cost per mile in check. One way you can do that is from the onset when you're buying the truck. You don't have to buy something just because you can afford to buy something. So it's really good to be outside. All right, second way you keep your cost per, you can keep your cost per, a second way you can keep your cost per mile in check is your personal expenses. This one gets folks, y'all. This one gets folks. This one gets folks more than the truck purchase does because many people just struggle with the truck purchase right most many people are just trying to qualify for a decent truck right most folks don't qualify for a brand new truck and then choose to get you know something lesser most folks don't qualify for a brand new truck period <laughs> keep your personal expenses in check 
What I mean by that is just because it's spring summertime and produce is pulling out of Cali like nobody's business and it's paying high top dollar and you come home and have good money in the accounts and I'll use myself as an example and you come home you got good money in the accounts and you see a Harley billboard and you take yourself to the Harley dealership to window shop don't mean you need to do that don't mean you need to buy a new Harley just because you got a little bit of money in your account don't mean you need to buy a new Harley because that Harley that Harley demands a monthly installment of whatever your monthly payment is. Now you've increased your cost per mile because you increased your salary as a driver. You increased what you have to pay yourself. Folks, I know I got prime drivers that still watch me here. This applies to you too. It's not just owner ops. I was a prime driver when I increased my cost per mile through my personal expenses. Just because produce is hauling great out of Cali doesn't mean you need to buy a new boat. Don't mean you need to buy a four-wheeler. Don't need, mean you need to, you know, buy a Daniel Defense rifle. I didn't buy all of that. You got to control your personal expenses. Just because you're making great money don't mean you need to move into a real big house. Make that money, allow yourself to travel through a few different seasons, spring, summer, fall, winter, back to spring, so you can pick up a pattern, so you can go through mechanical breakdowns, ups and downs, then maybe think about a Harley, then maybe think about a boat. And I ain't telling you what you do with your money, you grown. But this is the way you can control your cost per mile. For so many drivers, it's the boat that's making them drive so much. It's the boat that's that's the reason they can't go home. It's the Harley, that's the reason you can't go home. Don't say your company don't pay well enough. Examine yourself. It's the two-story, five-bedroom, three through two and a half bath house is the reason you can't go home. That's why you can't go home. Your personal expenses is just driving your cost per mile up because you have to pay yourself a certain amount in order to live. See what I'm saying? You gotta think about yourself as an employee. All right, and I'm gonna ask you this question and I'm gonna let you go. Are you an ideal employee for your business, owner operator? Here's what I mean. Sometimes people will say, oh, you're overqualified or, oh, we can't pay you enough, you know? Employee will say, oh, that's not enough money. It's not enough of a salary. It's not enough of an hourly wage for me to accept this position. Are you that employee for your business? Are you an employee who's saying, that's not enough of an hourly wage. That's not enough of a, a, a salary in order for me to work for my own business. You got to examine yourself, man. Keep your personal expenses down. Don't buy so many liabilities. A liability is any possession that costs you money. Doesn't make you money, just costs you money. Harley, monthly installment. Big TV, you plug it in the wall, that costs you electricity money. Okay? One reason why some folks don't think you can go home in trucking is because of their personal expenses and because of their truck purchase. And I really think personal expense is more than a truck purchase. But I just wanna drop that line, man, because you can go home. When I spent a month home, most recently when my truck was down, one thing, one good thing that came out of that was that I realized I can afford to take a month off of work. Man, that's a good feeling. I can afford to take a month off of work. For example, here's what I mean. If I pay myself $1,000 a week and it costs me $4,000 to pay myself in a month, I can make more than $4,000. I can make five to $6,000 on, on a nice week at Landstar. If I can make five to $6,000 on a nice week at Landstar, when I'm ready to go home, if I just stay out one more week, I have made what I need to pay myself to stay home for four weeks. See what I'm saying? 
If I decide, okay, my account's looking good, everything's looking good, I made what I need to make for the month to pay bills and to save money and for some extra stuff. Now, if I stay out one more week, I can stay home for a month, pay myself and have the same thing as today. See what I'm saying? But if you need to pay yourself six, seven, eight thousand dollars a month just to pay your personal bills not your business or anything yet just to pay your personal bills that's why you can't go home like that and when you get there it's why you can't stay home like that that's what i'm saying personal expenses y'all all right i'm gonna keep walking and getting this truck ready to go to work all right y'all already know what the motto is work hard play hard sleep hard find you somebody to love i love y'all don't forget, it's not about what you believe, it's all about why you believe it. Live free.